springtime had arrived, and the island of Sodor was busier than ever before. Extra trains had to be scheduled to accommodate the many spring travelers who came to the island. In addition, the pack was hard at work building a new structure in Sydney. However, the project was being kept tightly under wraps, so very few knew what it was going to be. One spring morning, Gordon, Edward, and Toby were at Knapford Station. I say, Edward, said Gordon, aren't you getting a little old to be pulling so many coaches? What do you mean, said Edward, I have only three. Precisely, said Gordon. I do hope your parts aren't getting too worn, Edward. They might have to retire you soon. Stuff and nonsense, said Toby. Edward's old, but he's still useful, and just as strong as any other engine on this railway. Besides, you're nearly as old as he is, Gordon. But before Gordon could reply, another engine pulled into the station. Why, hello there, steam engines, said Spamcan. The engines were most surprised. What are you doing here, said Edward. I've just come from London with a very important passenger. He's here to see Sir Topham Hatt. And just who is this important passenger, asked Toby. Inside the station house, Sir Topham Hatt was working in his office when he heard a knock on the door. Come in, he said. A well-dressed American gentleman walked into the room. Good morning, sir, he said. I hope I've not come at a bad time. That depends, said Sir Topham Hatt, entirely on your business. My name, said the man, is Oliver Queen. I'm here to discuss a business matter with you. Oliver Queen, said Sir Topham Hatt. Hmm, you wouldn't perhaps be related to Mr. Robert Queen, would you? Robert Queen was my father. But he passed away several years ago. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, said Sir Topham Hatt. Robert Queen and I were good friends. But where on earth are my manners? Please sit down. As Mr. Queen sat down, Sir Topham Hatt asked him, So, tell me, what are you doing in America these days? Well, said Mr. Queen, I... I use Queen Consolidated's resources to try to help Starling. Somebody needs to save the city. Hmm, I see, said Sir Topham Hatt. And what is it that brings you here today? I'm interested in building a Queen Consolidated research lab here on Sodor. I saw there was an empty lot in Wellsworth and thought it might be a good idea to seize the opportunity. Why Sodor? And for that matter, why come to me, said Sir Topham Hatt. Well, said Mr. Queen, I heard about the recent discovery of impervium at Trafarquar Quarry. Impervium, as you know, is a very rare metallic compound. Stronger than steel, absorbs shocks better than any shock absorber, and yet is lighter than tinfoil. We believe we can use it in our technology department for many a good purpose. Let's make a deal. If you discount the shipping cost of using your railway to transport impervium to Queen Consolidated, then I'll handle all the cost of the construction. Hmm, said Sir Topham Hatt, you know that might not be such a bad deal. The Sodor construction team is currently busy with another project, and renting construction workers from the mainland is quite costly. So, said Mr. Queen, do we have a deal? Hmm, said Sir Topham Hatt, I'll need to think about it. Come right and early tomorrow morning, though, as in the afternoon my wife and I are leaving for our wedding anniversary. We're taking a trip to Germany. I'll be sure to drop back in then, said Mr. Queen. Good day, Mr. Hat. And good day to you, Mr. Queen, said Sir Topham Hat. That afternoon, Sir Topham Hat spoke to Spamcan. Now, said Sir Topham Hat, I don't want any more trouble from you on this railway, but as long as you're here, we might as well put you to work. I want you to fetch some cars from Brendam Docks and take them to the building site at Tidmouth. Yes, sir, said Spamcan, and he oiled away. Thomas was at the construction site. He had brought a load of building supplies for the workers. Well, said Miss Jenny, looks like you're actually on time for once, Thomas. Um, thank you, Miss Jenny, said Thomas. Little did Thomas know that Spamcan was creeping up on him from behind. 
He nearly pushed Thomas over the edge of the building. Whoa! cried Thomas. Spam can! Oops, said Spam can. Sorry, though he really wasn't. The following day, Mr. Queen and Sir Topham Hatt officially signed their deal. A pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Queen, said Sir Topham Hatt. And with you, Mr. Hatt, said Mr. Queen. Now come along then, my dear, said Sir Topham Hatt. We don't want to miss our boat. To Brindam Docks, Gordon, as fast as you can. Gordon steamed proudly out of Napford Station. Edward and Terence were at Ellsbridge Station when Gordon thundered by. Hoo hoo! Called. Edward sighed. Maybe Gordon's right. Maybe I am getting too old for this. I could never go as fast as he can. Of course not, said Terence. But that's not because your age has made you useless. It's because you weren't built for speed. You're a mixed traffic engine, Edward, said Terence, and that's nothing to be ashamed of. You're an excellent worker, a hard worker, and most importantly, a good friend to everyone. People call me old and useless because they don't make tractors like me anymore, said Terence, but I can still plow a field like a young tractor. Before Edward could reply, the station master walked out of the station. Gordon's stuck on the hill, he said. You'll have to help him up, Edward. Peep, peep. I'll do my best, said Edward. Gordon was indeed stuck on the hill, but not because of the weight of his train, but because he had burst a safety valve. Oh, botheration, said Gordon. How am I going to get Sir Topham and Lady Hat to bring them docks on time now? It was then that Edward arrived. I've come to help you up, he said. No good at all, said Gordon. You'll see, said Edward. Edward pushed and puffed as hard as he could. He grunted and groaned as he pushed Gordon up the hill. I can make it, I can make it, said Edward. And he did. Gordon came over the crest of the hill. Hooray, he said. Edward, my boy, you've done it, you've done it. I've done it, I've done it puffed Edward as they rolled down Gordon's hill. Presently, they came to a signal box. Spam Can was there. Oh dear, said Gordon. Now Spam Can is going to laugh at me. But the diesel was silent. His driver, however, wasn't. We've broken down, he called. Can you help us to Brendam Docks? Edward was feeling very puffed from having to push Gordon over the hill. I don't know if I can do it, said Edward. Push Gordon and pull Spam Can too. Of course you can do it, old boy, said Edward's driver from inside the cab. I know you can. You're a really useful engine, and a really useful engine can do anything. Edward smiled. Well, he said, even if I can't do it, I'm going to try my best. That's the spirit, old boy, said his driver. Soon, Edward had switched lines and backed down on Spam Can in his train. The Diesel had said nothing during the entire process. I'll try my best to assist you, said Gordon, but I don't know if I'll be much help. That's all right, said Edward. I can do this. Slowly but surely, Edward's wheels began to turn. And they turned and turned and turned again. Edward, despite the exhausting effort, was pulling the entire cavalcade with him. Hurrah! Hurrah! shouted everyone's drivers. Keep going, Edward! Impossible as it seemed, Edward somehow managed to keep going and going. Go on, cried James. You can do it, Edward! Go on! At last, with one final effort, Edward brought the entire cavalcade into Brendam Docks. Everybody cheered and shouted for him. Sir Topham Hatt looked at his watch. Ah, just in time, he said. As he and his wife hurried along the dock, Sir Topham Hatt stopped next to Edward. Thank you so much, Edward, he said. 
I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't been there. I'll see personally to it that you are duly rewarded for your efforts. Edward was too exhausted to reply with words, but he did manage a proud smile. That evening, when all the other engines were asleep, Gordon spoke to Edward in Tidmouth Sheds. Thank you for coming to help me, Edward, said Gordon. I'm sorry I teased you about being slow and outdated. You truly are a really useful engine. Well, said Edward, I couldn't have let any other engine push you up that hill now, could I? Gordon smiled. Ah, how life comes around on itself. And then the two friends fell happily asleep. And in that moment, all was well on Sodor. Those who had done good would be rewarded, and those who had not would get what was coming to them. Old friendships had been renewed or were still in place, solid as ever. And new beginnings were soon to come. And as Sir Topham Hat and Lady Hat celebrated their anniversary, all around there was something in the air that gave a feeling of both completion and renewal, of both mortality and eternity, of both fond remembrance of the past and optimism for what the future held. And that night, for Thomas and all of his friends, everything felt right. Beautiful station, isn't it? It is indeed. Do you know it well? Well enough. I'm the controller of the Scarlowe Railway, so I see the station somewhat often whenever I come to visit Sir Topham Hatt. And what is your name again? Percival. Peregrine Percival. Well, my name is Oliver Queen. I know who you are. You're the man who came back from the dead. It must have been horrible for you on that island. It was. But I don't really like to talk about it, Mr. Percival. Of course. Forgive me. I understand. But now, I really must be going. Good day, Mr. Queen. It was a pleasure to meet you. Yes. And you as well.